All right, President Obama is now officially wheels down in Kenya, just arriving in Nairobi in the last hour as he spends the weekend at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. And there he is, he's coming down the stairs in the white jacket here. This is a woman I spent quite a number of hours with last week here in their ancestral village there in Kenya. This is Dr. Alma Obama in the white jacket. Uh, she traveled with him from the airport, actually, in his limousine as crowds were gathering as they approached city center. And I was given this tremendous opportunity, this exclusive opportunity to meet her uh, ahead of her brother's trip uh, traveling to the president's ancestral village uh, where Alma gave me unprecedented access to the family they share including their 93 year old step grandmother who still lives in Nyangoma Kogelo where uh, their father is buried. Alma Obama runs an organization there aimed at encouraging young people to lift themselves out of poverty and so Alma welcomed me exclusively to see her work at Salty Koo. Take a look. Sautiku, Swahili for Powerful Voices, is an organization distinct in its vision of empowering young people. A source of hope for one young man who could barely afford his schooling. I had some dream within me that uh, one day, uh, through education, I may uh, have my way out of the problem I was in by that time. Morris Otieno grew up in a small hut off a narrow dirt path and was drawn to Saltiku when his family was struggling. When you first came to Saltiku, you were 22. Yes. And what brought you here? Oh, the reason why I came here, uh, it was because of uh, the idea that Saltiku had. <laughs> Saltiku was founded in 2010 by President Obama's half-sister, Alma Obama. Alma invited me to Kenya for an exclusive first look at what she has created. The vision in itself to give the community here uh, a possibility to create their own future by using their potential and using what they have, the resources they have, to be able to feed themselves, to clothe themselves, to send their kids to school, to get a little bit of an income. When Alma came with the idea, she was trying to challenge our mentality so that we can change and believe that it is us. It starts with you. It all started when Alma went to a local school, sat 10 kids down just under a tree and asked what they needed. Morris was one of those 10. When I was a kid, uh, uh, I was wishing that one day I have a good life, a good life, a better life somewhere. But uh, when Uma came, uh, she made me understand that it's not just wishing, but go for it, go for it and get it. He is special because he has a very, very difficult background. His mother struggled to keep him in school. His older sister had to get married before she even finished junior school. My junior but through the help of Sal Tiku, Morris is now three years away from completing his medical school at the University of Nairobi. Inspired by the organization's support of Morris, Lois Thuo yes. offered to pay yeah, his yeah, tuition. Yeah. Hey, she has since become like a mother to Morris, which made this moment that much more emotional when she met his biological mother for the very first time. The mama, yes, I've never met her before. Yeah. This is the first time. Yeah. Yeah. In Morocco. I'm your mom more. How do I translate that? She says she's, she's so happy. She said many, many thank yous, and she's very, very happy. Very How do you feel about everyone fawning all over you? Everyone's <laughs> three mothers. Three mothers. I am very happy about it. Very happy. And true to Saltiku's mission, Morris pays it forward, volunteering at this orphanage that Lois runs. He's been tutoring the kids there, and there has been such a drastic improvement in their, in their grades. And he's very good with young people, mm. so he can really give back in terms of telling his story. With the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Dancing, singing, yeah. just even his presence. Yeah. I imagine these little boys look yeah. up to him and think, that could be me. Yeah. I think now I'm a source of inspiration to all other youths here. You are. So, yes. You are. So they, they also bank their hope on me. Mm. Mm. Yes. No pressure, Doc. 
Sao <laughs> <laughs> Tiku also serves as an example to this community, cultivating its own garden just to show the people here of Kogelo how they can grow and provide food for themselves. Why do you care so much? Because it's so easy to do this, and it's so, it's so normal. It doesn't make sense that people are going hungry when they have land. And what better place for Alma Obama to go for advice on gardening than the White House? Your sister-in-law, Michelle Obama, I hear is quite the gardener. They have a beautiful yes, garden at the White House. Right. Have you traded gardening tips with your uh, sister-in-law? We've talked about it because I've told her what I'm doing. Yeah. And like I said, I have her book and I would like to kind of work with that as well. Now, just a few years after breaking ground on Salty Koo, the foundation is still growing with a new soccer field and resource center. And young people like Morris are thriving too. What does Alma Obama, what does she mean for you? Alma. Alma is like a, a mother to me. Uh, she's also, she has also inspired me. You know, there's a um, saying that used to go around, you know, you, you give people fish. And then the saying changed within the development world, you teach them how to fish. And what I say is, no, don't give people fish. Don't teach them how to fish. Ask them if they eat fish. <laughs> and that's what we do at Saltiku. We ask the people, what do you need to improve your lives, to make your lives livable, to make your lives such that you don't run away from what you already have, that you see your potential. One needs to know that these young people are able and can do a lot with their lives. They just need the support. Yeah.